Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Mitchell. I'm a communications manager with the Lighthouse Lab Services team, and I'm here today with Dr. Melissa Bell, who serves as a technical consultant and lab director for Lighthouse. Dr. Bell, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we're chatting because a number of lab advocacy organizations, uh, including the College of American Pathologists and the American Association for Clinical Chemistry, recently expressed to CMS through public comments that they are against individuals who hold a doctorate of clinical laboratory science, such as yourself, serving as laboratory directors. And it's fair to say you were disappointed when you heard about that uh, decision. Is that correct? That's correct, Alex. It was a little disheartening to see some of the responses um, that came in from these organizations. Well, definitely, and we'll get into that in a second, but let's back up for a moment um, for the uninitiated. Uh, can you briefly explain what a DCLS degree is and what led you to pursue it? Absolutely. So a DCLS degree is a doctorate of clinical laboratory science degree. Um, currently, there are three programs in the United States, um, University of Texas Medical Branch, Rutgers, and Kansas that offer these degrees to individuals like myself. What it is, it is a three-year uh, clinical-based program that really focuses on uh, test interpretation, test selection, and how these tests apply to patient care. Um, and how you can help uh, physicians, MDs, and well as patients with the appropriate selection of tests. And I pursued this degree basically because I wanted more of a presence um, in clinical care. You know, lab is often sometimes seen as um, behind the scenes. You don't see the people who do the testing, who turn out those results. I wanted to change that. I wanted to be a part of that change um, for lack of a better um, explanation. I grew up in the laboratory. My whole career has been spent in the laboratory. I started as a bench tech. Uh, I had my bachelor's in clinical laboratory science, and I worked strictly in all areas of the lab for several years. That's how I got started. And then I just kind of worked my way um, up through the ranks. I got to be an administrative laboratory director, um, working with a clinical pathologist to kind of oversee the operations of the laboratory. And I wanted to take it a step further, and this seemed the appropriate way to, to go about doing that. Absolutely. I think that's a great path for it. So it's like you said earlier, you were very surprised to see this position taken by all these uh, various organizations. So what was your initial reaction when that announcement came down and why do you feel that the position to be against DCLS holders serving as laboratory directors is misguided? It, when I first read through some of the statements that were made by CAP and AACC, um, it was very disheartening. I don't feel like they did thorough research into what a DCLS is and what they can actually do. Um, one of the organizations compared an MD to a PhD and how those degrees were similar, and I, I would have to disagree with that. Um, MDs are very clinical based in nature, whereas PhDs are very research based in nature. If anything, a DCLS graduate actually mirrors the education of a clinical pathologist, of an MD. We are trained in hematopathology. We are trained in pathophysiology, pharmacology, uh, clinical laboratory based medicine. That's just some of the curricula that we have to take. Um, so I don't feel like they really understand the background that a DCLS has and what they can bring to the table. You know, some of the other requirements for a DCLS are that we have to have a bare minimum of three years in the clinical laboratory as a generalist. Like I said, I've grown up in the laboratory. My whole career has been based who better to serve as a high complexity director than somebody who has been immersed in the laboratory their whole you know, their whole entire life, um, who have been a part of CAP inspections, COLA inspections, CLIA inspections, who are up to date on regulations, who have the experience of day-to-day -day testing. They know how the analyzers work. They interpret the QC. They can look at a test result and say, does that make sense with what's going on with the patient? There's nobody better to fit that role than somebody who has that experience and that educational background. I can't think of a more qualified individual personally either. Um, so 
I guess as this battle plays out through the public comments comments of CMS's rulemaking, uh, is there currently a pathway available for DCLS graduates to sit for accreditation? There, there is, and actually the regulation, um, I think the common misunderstanding here is the DCLS um, being a high complexity lab director, that regulation is not new. If you actually look at the current regulations, it's actually 493.1443B. Um, it states that a person to be a high complexity lab director must hold an earned doctoral degree in a chemical physical, biological, or clinical laboratory science, which is what I hold, from an accredited institution and be certified and continue to be certified by a board approved HH HHS. Currently, there are several um, board exams that are available to take. Uh, the NRCC is the one that is allowing the DCLS graduate to sit for their exam and take and be registered um, on their board. I know of three DCLS graduates who have successfully challenged that exam and are currently serving as high complexity lab directors. So there is a current path. And again, the regulation is not new. Um, it's in there currently. I just think there's a there's a common misnomer. There's a lot of confusion about um, what the regulation currently states and what CMS is just trying to bring to light. I really appreciate that clarification because uh, even in the comment sections on some of our blogs about this subject, uh, we, we hear some pushback sometimes and confusions uh, about what a, a DCLS graduate can sit for and, and the roles that you can hold. So I, I really appreciate you shedding a little light on that. Yes, I really just think that what CMS is trying to do is they are really just trying to clarify the regulation as it stands. They're really trying to define what a DCLS is, the education that they bring to the table, and where their role is for a high complexity lab laboratory director. I honestly believe there is seat at the table for all three, an MD pathologist, a DCLS, and a PhD. Um, labs across the country are very different. You have molecular labs, you have toxicology labs, and then you have your regular clinical laboratories. Um, the way it is currently, your MD pathologist and even uh, your PhD uh, directors who sit in that role, normally they delegate um, their some of their responsibilities to a technical supervisor, uh, you know, a generalist med tech or somebody who even has a master's degree with medical technology. Normally a high complexity lab director, um, even a moderate complexity lab director, they can hold up to five licenses and oversee five different laboratories. They don't have the manpower or the time to be at each of those labs full time. So those roles are delegated. I think where a DCLS really can help with that is they can be in the laboratory full time. They can provide um, that knowledge and that expertise to physicians that they're serving, to patients that they're serving. Um, again, I just think that there's room at the table for all three degrees. Well, thank you for providing your thoughts on that, Dr. Bell. Um, very illuminating, like I said, and we appreciate your in, um, insight and your advocacy as well. I just wanted to quickly mention that if anyone wanted to offer public comment uh, in support of uh, uh, DCLS holders serving as laboratory directors. CMS is still accepting comments until September 25th, so please uh, feel free to do so. Dr. Bell, are there any other um, avenues that you'd uh, offer in terms of ad advocacy for your degree or um, uh, anything else like that? We have to have our voice heard. You know, I've read a lot of the comments on social media that have been made and, you know, in response to some of the things that we at Lighthouse have done um, concerning a DCLS. Um, the laboratory community as a whole is just feeling very unsupported, um, not only just with regular med techs and testing and, and that sort of thing, but they're feeling unsupported by places like CAP and AACC. So I think it's very important that we ha we get our voices out there. We speak up, we write letters, we advocate for our profession. You know, if COVID did anything um, for us, it showed how important medical laboratory scientists are. It showed how important clinical laboratory science testing is. Um, we need to speak up. We need to express how we feel. We need to advocate for 
the knowledge that we bring to the table because there's there is a lot of education and a lot of expertise that comes with this field people just aren't aware of it so the best thing that we can do is we can speak up and we can make that education public absolutely dr bell thanks again for your time today really appreciate it thank you